the Shock Lock podcast. Today's guest is a tourless native, a former Wildcat, Glammire, and now Father Matthews uh, player. Just back from Romania with the Irish Tree by 3v3 team and getting ready to head over to Cyprus for the Small Countries Championship. So without further ado, it's Grani Dwar. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to the Shot Clock Podcast with me, Jago. Uh, this week's guest is a former Waterford Wildcat, Team Montanotti Glamour, as they were back then, um, and now Father Matthews player, three-on-three three Irish international, just recently made the senior international team yet again. Ronnie Dwar, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. So look, I start off every episode kind of the same way. Now that we're transitioning back out of the whole madness of COVID, how are you getting on? How are you finding real life again? Yeah, um, it's actually been refreshing. Um, I suppose the senior and I suppose all international teams are back on court now. I was fortunate enough, as I was saying to you, I worked all through COVID. So that was nice, refreshing and a bit of routine. And now that we're back at the basketball, um, yeah, life just seems somewhat normal for sure. Uh, tough enough going though at the moment with still restrictions and guidelines in place. Like I'm up to Dublin every weekend. You know, it's a lot of miles on the clock, on the body, on the car, everything. But, you know, definitely worthwhile. And just back from Romania as well, um, I got to watch your three games for the, the three on three. Results didn't go your way, but you look like you were still having the ball out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think anyone that has competed in any of the three v three, the FIBA competitions, will tell you it is. It's invigorating. It's like just the atmosphere, the setting. I actually got text messages from a woman I worked with, and she said, "Look, I know things aren't going your way, but Jesus," she said, "the place looks unbelievable. The views are amazing." And I was like, "What is she talking about? I'm here after three losses, and she's like seeing this lovely sun setting in the sky." But it is, the location is always unreal, the atmosphere, the music blaring. Um, very, very different this year because, you know, to travel, you have to have two COVID tests before you leave, a COVID test when you get there, you're in your bubble, you can't mix with any other teams. We were in our room until the test came back. So very, very different. But like, for me, it was my first international game since twenty summer of 2019. And it was just amazing to get on a plane get out there and actually get a few games under our belt before we head to um cyprus at the end of the month she's a busy busy couple of weeks ahead of you yeah it's been flat out like i was there for the whole i suppose january was a just a crap month for everyone i would say like you know it was tough going the weather whatever but then then end of April came, basketball got back and everything started kicking off and I just have been on the go non-stop since and it's just nice to actually have that normality. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Like I said, um, Father Matthews now, Glamour for 12 years, Waterford Wildcats before that. Well, let's go back to the first time you picked up a ball. Who, what or why inspired you to, to become a basketball player? Um, so strangely enough, it was I was 12 when I started playing basketball. So, like you said, I'm originally from Tip, so I would have played sport more camogie. Like, then, you know, your parents would throw you into everything. So, like the gymnastics, the Irish dancing, the usual stuff. But um, when we were, yeah, when I was in sixth class, I suppose my sister Neve plays, obviously, as well. Yeah. And she had started playing in school as well, in secondary school in the press. Then in sixth class, we got it as, like, I think for six, eight week gap. And then from there, I just... Kind of, it kind of took off. I went into first year in the Prez Terrace and yeah, it all took off from there. Just loved it. Helped that I was slightly good at it. And yeah, just it kind of skyrocketed from there. We had a really, really successful school team, like from say junior cert on. We were like in every All Ireland senior um, Copa League. And after that, then I headed off to Wildcats. And how many so I, there was no kind of inspiration or why it just kind of happened just happened yeah or organically i love it yeah that's <laughs> it i'm all about the organic stuff yeah <clears throat> so look all the years with with Glamour, four with wildcats and now with father matthews who's been mm -hmm. your favorite teammate and why oh oh yeah, it's a tough um 
it is a, a really tough one. I suppose I have a bit of longevity there. So it has changed, you know, true. Like I would have always played with my sister in school. You know, she's definitely one of, she's in my top four. You know, she pushes me, she pisses me off. She's the person, like, if I was taking anyone to war with, it's Neve. Like, you know, if you're 50 points down or 50 points up, there's no off switch. She's going, you know, hell for letter. And like, that's inspiring for me. And, you know, all you, like, you know, all, like the other thing is like, if you're down and someone makes that break, you know, she's, she's with you, she's there. But I suppose when I went to Wildcats first, um, you know, I was only 18 and I started playing Super League then. And I really admired Olivia O'Reilly. You know, she definitely, looking back, I didn't appreciate her at the time, uh, but she was a real, like she, she acted like such a professional. You know, she trained with us two days a week. She played her game. Her knowledge of the game was so good. Um, she worked out then two, three days to keep her, like she was about 30 when I, I think 30, 32, early 30s when I started playing with them. But she personified like definitely professionalism. And looking back, I, like, you know, I learned loads from her, how she played the game, like how she would talk to us in huddles. So definitely one of my favorite teammates to play with also. And then, so that would be probably been Wildcats years. Then moved on to Glamire. Look, there was just so many, like me definitely is in my top three. But then in Glamire, like I had just met so much friends that like brought me along as a person off the court more so you know I was extremely close to Anya McKenna and like to be fair to Glenn Meyer like Anya Casey and Claire Rockett are still there like doing their thing with Glenn Meyer um Jesus such a hard question and then I like I've after moving to Matthews and um I play with they're actually I play with Shannon Brady I don't know if you know Shannon she's mm-hmm. a teammate of mine she's an American girl this will be her third season so yeah we, this will both be our third season so she had played with me years, came through um, Gart McGuire's Sports Changes Life, had played against me National League, but her work, her work ethic is amazing on and off the court. And like, she's only 26, 27, but she's definitely like inspiring. She's just a workhorse and a great teammate and a great friend. So yeah, there's a few out there. And I have another, she was D3 in college. Wow. So she went, she went to, like, she's American, never got a scholarship, came over to Ireland. And, like, it's, it's like, not, I'm not saying, like, I just can't see how someone didn't pick her up and she didn't get, like, a full ride to college when I see other people that might. And then I look at this and I'm like, doesn't make sense to me. But, yeah. Amazing. And then internationally in the last few years now, I've played with Fiona O'Dwyer, who played in the 3v3 with us. Yes. Yeah, and Fiona, like, again, another D3 college graduate and, you know, decided to take off and love playing basketball, has been doing her thing in Europe for the last couple of years and comes home. Like, her, both her parents are from Tipperary as well, which is, like, really strange. And her, like, she's, like, about a half an hour outside Charlotte. She's dark hair, she's tall, and her name's Dwyer. And I'm like, no, we're not related. But again, like, a really good friend and, like, a really good teammate, yeah. I couldn't, I can't just pick one. No, solid picks. But you mentioned your sister Neve there. Um, as you said, you played with her through school, played some club basketball with her as well, and now she's transitioned into the coaching side of things. And mm. like while researching this for today and, and looking through your background, some some great quotes from both of you about you know driving each other and annoying each other and you know, silence over dinners and whatever, because what's been going on in the games. I coached my little brother and it was very similar. Like I was ultra hard on him because yeah. I expected more from him, which was unfair in a way. Is is Neve the same with you? You're you have to be the guiding light for the team. Uh no, absolutely not. She's <laughs> uh, she's not. Uh, she's definitely not. Ah, uh, she knows I got it, so she doesn't have to be. I uh, know I'm only joking. Um she's like Neve's gas, like because Neve, the player, Neve, the coach are totally different people. And I think that transition for me was extremely hard. Um, so she's also a teacher. So, you know, I'm like, I'm not a student. 
We are Claire. I'm her sister, you know, so she has her teacher voice and her teacher cues. She's fucking killing me for saying that. But anyway, <laughs> um, but she does. And I like, but yeah, so no, she doesn't have an expectation of me. But Neve is the kind of person like for training. There's no like her. I, I reckon already she's mad for the season start. I reckon she has every training session laid out for the first 10 weeks. She's she's ready to go. She's very prepared. She's very organized. And she always does her research as a coach. She's genuinely and I like I I'm not just saying this is because she's my sister if I didn't believe it I honestly wouldn't say it she like she's only new to the coaching and she probably has loads to learn her practice um her practices are unbelievable her game coaching she'll definitely learn so much more she has learned so much in the last two years and so much more now um but I think she'll be like an exceptional coach I don't know how she feels about coaching me I'd say she would does be at our wits end some of the time because you know I'm a little bit erratic, a little bit crazy. Um, but yeah, no, she's she's definitely there's no expectation there at all. You know, I think she takes me at face value and she sees what I can bring to the team and we just kind of go forward with that. But she also has no problem telling me to shut the f up or chill out or put me back in my box. That's for sure. Brilliant, love it, absolutely love it. So over the years, who have you found the toughest person to guard? And then on the flip side, who guarded you the hardest during your seasons in the league? Yeah. Um, over the years, you know, I've played like, you know, one of the best, Michelle Fahey. You know, she's just, I've played with her. I've played against her. And only recently there, last season, she started playing with Marie again. And it's the small fucking thing she does. It's her vision on the court. She's just her like yeah she like honestly I think if she hadn't played that game we would have we would have beat Mary by 10 she came on how she like she's yeah no she's exceptional Ex- exceptionally good definitely one of the hardest people I've ever guarded and I was fortunate enough to play against her I played with her and had that in training as well you know um one of the hardest people to guard I think in the in the last few years let's be honest Jasmine Boone really left a um, an impact on the on the Irish league um, like she could play inside outside a very dynamic player but yeah so I think she was very challenging as well the women's and, game at the minute is just unbelievable the talent that's in the Irish women's league reminds me of the late 80s early 90s of the women's league it's, it's yeah. very very similar like there's no huge superstars but there's like teams of superstars. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I agree with you. I think when they act, when you get that mix right, and that's what I'm hoping for this summer as well. Like like that, you know, everyone's a superstar in their club team. When you come internationally with such a good range of players, you know, magic. It, c- it can be just magical. But the same at club, you know, like that. You always have maybe your three, two, three more dominant players, and then. You have just a bunch of, and I know for our team, like, you know, we're growing, we're a young team. It's a bunch of workhorses that put the effort in. And like that, you know, you'll always have people that will stand out with the league in general. It's it's definitely like, you know, Glamour dominated for years. You know, UL had their run for years. Wildcats had a run back in the day as well, you know. And I know it all comes full circle, but right now, I think in the women's league, it could be anyone's. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see you know, going forward, what's going to happen this this season? It's it's all about who who's who's been keeping in shape. You know who they bring in, who's graduated because obviously the under 18s are now senior players. So mm-hmm. that transition, can they fit in? They they were a superstar at 18s level. They're going to be a role player super league. Can they make that transition? Is there a veteran there to put their arm around them and go right? This this is how you transition. Is the coach still tuned in? It's just going to be such an interesting season. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, obviously, being my age and what I played, like, the sport is all about the youth and what's coming through. You know, um, don't get me wrong, I'm going to play until I feel like I can't play no more. Or when I stop hating to lose, I, I'm like, if I stop hating to lose, I think it's time to, like, pack it in. But I do think 
I do, you're talking about the under 18s and I think there's such a gap between under 18 and Super League level you know and like you said who's going to transition in and it is a process and it is hard but I feel like there's a gap from under 20s as well you know so you play under 18s you have competitive league you have like probably double league above we've Cork League they go around say like oh like you go to under 20s and you have um, Cup and Cup could be two games yeah so then you're in limbo. You don't have 18s and you're coming off like two, three training sessions a week. You're going to under 20s. You're not quite there, Super League, and you potentially have to play Premier and you need that little bit of a higher standard. And so then you're in 20s and, and you're in limbo. You get two games if you, if you don't make cup or whatever and then you're gone. So then potentially there's where you're looking at as well as dropout for Absolutely. a lot of our girls. You know, and the other side of it as well, there's always hidden gems in there. Like, you know, once you mind, like you said, mind them, look after them. They have a coach or a league to play in. And I think there is a big fallout between the ages of 18 to 20, 21, because they don't have anything to focus on under 20s. Yeah, very, very yeah. true. And it's tough. I know it's tough for like area boards and, and, and basketball learning as well to try and keep people engaged in those age groups because... Like we've all done it. There's been college. There's been work. Your social yeah. life takes off, and mm-hmm. it's not as appealing to train three and four nights a week unless you're of a certain mindset that you want. Unless you're, unless you're stupid. <laughs> or, yeah, unless college isn't an option. Yeah, <laughs> but like yeah. You, you know that it's like you know your friends are going out on a Friday night. You have a game on a Friday mm-hmm. night. It's I think it's a very difficult age to keep engaged and involved, but. I, I can't see an easy option of, of keeping them engaged and involved. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. And you know what? Like, easier said than done. It is all about the balance. And I think you and I can both say, looking back in hindsight, you know, you have many nights to go out, you know, so many opportunities to do all them things you think you're going to miss out on when you're younger. But like, there's only a certain period you can play for, realistically, competitively, at the highest level. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough to say that, like, I'm still doing it. Like, I still, like, I have a good work-life balance, you know, I have a good social life. I have all them things. But, you know, but basketball did come first with me. Like, through the, through my teens, my 20s, you know, most of my life. But um, there is, and it is hard to keep them engaged. And also, like, with COVID, COVID restrictions, not being able to get back on the court. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a dropout in basketball to other sports, especially if parents want to keep their kids engaged. You know, so it it, it has been really tough on Basketball Ireland. As much as I might kind of give out about them at times, they have tried actively to sort all this out. And I think like the tributary, like you've done it yourself, the tributary leagues that are going around the country, I think everyone needs to get involved and start playing it. Like I'd be a fierce advocate for tributary. I played since 2014 and like it's just it hits differently yeah so my kids loved it like the, the girls absolutely absolutely loved it you know I'm only recently transitioning back into coaching myself I've I took a lot of advice from different people Paul Kelleher was like a major part of my decision to go coaching and a major <laughs> He bullied you. I know he bullied you into it. I know like. <laughs> it wasn't. He actually, what he said to me was, I said, I'm, I'm looking to get back into coach. And he said, coach women. That was his first advice to me. Oh, coach women. And I went, why? Because like, you know, it just, it didn't, I was like, what? but why? And he said, look, if you coach a women's team or a teenage girls team, you need to learn how to be humble and that will make you a better coach. And I think it's the most solid. That's, yeah. You know, he coached me in Glenmire for a year. Did he really? Yeah. And the only reason you see this, the only reason he did it, he had no other men's team to coach. <laughs> big, big shout out to Paul. I know I'll get so, a message yeah, straight away for that. To be fair, Tim, we had once he bought, like I, like uh, when he, like, I don't know, when he came in for his interview, I was like, "Why do you want to coach us?" And I met the team, and I was like, "Don't rock up to any of our games in a suit." I was like, "Cause he'd be down in the the marriage, like." Fucking three piece suit. I was like, no, don't do it. Just come, coaches. To be fair, we had a, an awesome year that year. Everyone bought into the system, and yeah, it was good out crack. 
Yeah, he's a good he's a good guy, I have to say. I have to say one of one of the yeah. out there. So basketball players notori- notoriously superstitious. Have you any superstitions or pre-game routines that if you if you don't do them will throw you for the whole day? No, I actually don't, but I tend to, and I'd say a lot of people do this, just go to the toilet a lot before a game. My bladder is constantly full. I can't lie. It's like team talks happening. Where's Grania? In the bathroom. Game's about to start in Romania. I have to go to the bathroom again. Everyone's like, what is wrong with you? So, like, <laughs> it's, it's like it's nerves. I can't. It's, it's like my body getting ready for the game. I just constantly. Martin Harry used to coach me in school. He'd start his team talk and he'd look around and he's like, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's like, you're all right. I know where you are. I know what you're doing. You're getting ready. It's all good. But no, I don't really. I really, like, I think as I've got older, good night's sleep, eat decent that week, that day. You can have, you know, go to town after the game. But yeah, sleep, eating well, and emptying the bladder, I suppose. That's it. (laughs) Fantastic advice. (laughs) That's it. Your favourite shoes of all time, if you could make a Grania Dwyer personal edition, what company and what shoe would it be? I'm going to say Nike because I actually wear them a lot. But I got a pair of Adidas there two seasons ago and they were super comfortable. But I met a pair, I designed my own Kyrie's. I'm not sure, I think they were the Kyrie trees for when I went to Baku. I did them in all the Irish colours. And then me seeing them, she's like, I'm going to do it too. And I think they were super comfortable. I loved them and they were definitely my favourite shoe. I love those ones that you can design yourself. You become so yeah. don't you? It's like, what? Like, yeah, it- absolutely. Even though like, I, I don't, I'm not, not really arty or anything like that. But then I'm like, whatever way I start hitting the buttons on the thing, I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I'm going to go with these. Here's one for you. Do you wear sliders off court? Um, I'm really I'm rocking the Burks at the moment. Oh, yeah. So um, I do have I do I thought they were called slides. I don't just slides or sliders. You know, depends but, on where you are in the country. But yeah, no. So I'm going with the Burks at the moment. So yeah. Well, there's a great company, Oi Slide USA, where you can design your own sliders. So uh, jump. That's up. Got, do, do, you the, do you remember the KD ones with the little bum bag on the front? We got a great kick out of them. One time Hannah Torrington was, uh, she's like, I actually really like them guys. Like, and you know, you can just put the key and you're like, your, um, your card, your bank card in them. It's all you need for training. Like when you're going, I was like, no, don't rock, don't rock up with them. <laughs> That's the, the veteran coming out going, no. Yeah. yeah. Not, no, no. It's not allowed on this team. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you and four others going to a pickup game. So you're going to be playing Elaine Scally's five because Scally's been holding court for the last, I think it's two months. So her team is Dana Finn, Claire Rockall, Suzanne McGuire, Amor Howard and herself. So who are you taking? It's you plus four positionally to play. Go again. They have... They have Dana, yeah. Claire Rockall, Elaine yeah. Scally, Suzanne McGuire, Amor Howard. Who am I taking? Who are you taking? So, me, Neve, Fahi, Ooh. Lindsay. Oh, Jesus. Um, I have one more. Five. One more. Oh. I'm taking Olivia O'Reilly with me. I am dying to see how this goes tomorrow. It's our little Instagram vote every week. I can't wait. To oh, see. Yeah. That's that's a serious five. Let's see. Let's see. Can we knock Scally off the court? She said to me about three weeks ago, I just want a woman to beat me. I don't want a man's team to beat me. So if another woman beats me... I, I, I'm, I'm having woman. my sub. Sorry to cut you off. Go on. Oh, Katrina White is my sub. Who? Katrina White is my sub. Mm. Have you ever played with or against? No, I've watched her play. She's one of my favourite yeah. referees, believe it or not. Yeah, no, I like her reference too. She lets the the game flow. Yeah, and, and she, but she talks to you. She's she like does, an old school yeah. ref. She'll talk to you and tell you what you're doing wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> Love Katrina. Katrina's great. Great, great player. And fantastic ref. 
So we'll change lanes a little bit. Top five musical artists of all time. Who could you not live without? Ooh, ooh, Oasis, number one. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, love them. Wow, okay. Yeah, Oasis, the Dubliners. Um, top five, this is hard. Yeah. Um, I was a big Kings Leon fan. Um, Beyonce. And I was the biggest Westlife fan in the world. Yep. Oasis to Westlife. But you like you were right there. You were up there at the peak of this interview. I was going, this is <laughs> and, Yeah, you know I love them too. You rock out with look, I'm not gonna lie, they're one of my favorite karaoke bands of all time. <laughs> like that's the one you sing in the car, that's it's always, you know. Yeah, but that's why you have to love them. They always get me going. They do, yeah, it's sad that they do, but they, they actually do, yeah. Can't admit, I can't believe I'm admitting that on a, on a podcast. Yeah. Poppers, isn't it? Isn't that one of life. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the DJ. What three songs are we warming up to before tip off? Oh, um, Bruno Mars, just the way you are. To warm up to? Yeah, I'm one of these kind of people that don't need a lot of. Do, do, do. If you ever play in um, well you won't because you're not female playing against Brunel um, they always put on Eminem oh what song is it and I don't know what it is but I just like it really gets me going um, I can't even remember the name of it now but they haven't there's an Eminem song that they always put on and oh, I'll think of the name and I'll let you know so maybe that Eminem one Bruno Mars and when I want to be emotional and I'm a big game, it's not really to warm up to but before it. One moment in time kind of catches me as well with Whitney Easton. Are you learning are you learning loads about me here? Like you're yeah, you're scaring me. <laughs> One moment in time before a basketball game. Is that just you're to keep bring you down? Yeah, goosebumps, chills. If you're going out to a cup final, you're going out representing your country. They're all moments that, like, you know, we have to really, Sa like... Savour the moments. Appreciate them. Yeah, savour. To be fair, Whitney Houston. Yeah. That's it. You don't have to say anything. Did you watch the documentary? I did, yeah. On Netflix, like wasn't that one. I cried yeah. like a baby. I was sitting there going, this is so sad. Look at Her life was so sad. Yeah. So sad. Such yeah. a talent. She's such ah, a talent. Absolutely. That's, it's mad. Right, so... You made your Irish debut at 15. I did, yeah. I'm coaching under 16s right now, so that's the same age you were when you made that transition. So what advice would you give, like, a 16-year-old you, if you could sit her down now, knowing everything you've been through in, in life and in mm -hmm. basketball, what, what advice would you give to a 16-year-old you? Yeah, absolutely. I suppose enjoy it, like, live in the moment, kind of. You know, I, I, like looking back, I like I was lucky, as I was saying, like, you know, I was quite good at basketball, but I did work extremely hard uh, on my own, not during the school year, but the summer year, especially when like international basketball kicked in. So I would just say, if you really like, you know, put in the work, you know, I know it's such a cliche, but like, you know, hard work beats talent and talent doesn't work. And that's, you know, I think KD said it, and it's so true. And that's what I would say. Just, you know, keep working. Like, don't be afraid to ask for advice. Don't be afraid to ask someone. Like, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Like, for me, like I was saying, I was never good academically. So when I started playing basketball, like, it gave me a new lease of life. It, like, you know, I found me. And, like, I was fortunate, for, fortunate enough to have basketball. But I would say, yeah, put in the work, and it will pay off. Absolutely. What I try to, I'm trying to instill in my girls' team. We're trying like for two hours a week now. I'm like, it's mm -hmm. the hours away from here are going to make the difference next season. Not what I teach you between this hour and this hour. It's what yeah. you do on your own, and it just it doesn't seem to register. You know. Yeah, but you know what? My parents would have never told me go and train, go run, go do this. It has to come from them. 
you know, and like you're saying under 16, they mightn't realize it till they're under 20s. You know, and even I'd say like, you know, I was, I won't say sauntering. I was playing with Wildcats for four years. I trained two days a week, played a game every weekend. And like, you know, I was a decent basketball player, but I went to Australia, took a career break in 09 from work, took a year out. The only thing I missed was basketball. And from that on, so I was 26 when I came back. From 26, I'm now 36. The last 10 years, I've worked my freaking ass off to kind of stay, you know, fit, healthy to play basketball. So it is all about your work ethic. But I like I know you're saying that about your kid, but I think it does have to come from yourself. And, you know, it's also nice, I suppose, bonding for you, trying to get her out there. But yes. it's when she comes to you and is like, hey, dad, let's go yeah. rebound the ball for me. <laughs> that's ex- yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. So second last question, dead or alive, five dinner guests? Anyone. Any five. Friend, family, famous sitting down at your dinner table when restrictions lift or they're double vaxxed or whatever way we don't know but yeah for you and five these are just i don't know i feel like with the year that we've had it'll be all emotional and all people like you know like my dad for sure my granny una um who else? I don't know. Maybe just them two. That'd be some crack. <laughs> um, why are these Why are these questions so hard when you ask me? I, I, I don't know. Why are you trying to put me on the spot? I don't know. Dead or alive? I think I'd just bring J- Jamie Dornan as well for something to look at in his accent. Just, you know, to spice it up a little. Um, five. Two more. No, but no basketball players. No, I play enough of that. <laughs> I can I can read all their books. I'd be intimidated by the conversation. I would be afraid to talk. Um, two more people. I really don't know. Genuinely. Oh, I take I bring Chantel back from America. Love her, Chantelle Alfers. And dinner. Now, these people mightn't all get on together. These are just people I'd like there. <laughs> I'd be better with them individually. Um, I don't have another one, I can't think. I'm, I'm blank. One more per- what? I'm not bring Nave, no. You know, I have another sister. Maybe I'd bring her just to mix it up. There you go. So yeah. no, no basketball. I, I, I have enough for Neve. That's true. That is true. We'll give you that yeah. one. So follow on from that. Are you cooking or are we ordering takeaway? Oh. Oh, yeah, no, I'd order takeaway. <laughs> Jamie Dorn doesn't get home cooking, though. No? no, he doesn't. He's loads of money. He can buy the takeaway. That's very true. True yeah. story. True story. Yeah. We'll, we'll give you that one. So last question, but before we go on, look, thanks for your time. Best of luck in the small countries when you get there in a couple of weeks. Enjoy training over the next few weeks. You're you're one of the lucky few. A little bit envious that I, I, I'm not still playing at, at that level. But um, I think you're going to have I'm a great very, I'm very fortunate, really. You are so lucky. The whole, yeah. Everybody, all elite athletes. Hannah Thornton said to me, you know, I'm so lucky to be... And I went, no, no. Luck is like... 40% of it but like 60% is the work you've put in to become yes. elite you know what I mean it's so never just brush it off as oh I'm so lucky to play you worked your ass off to get an Irish jersey you deserve to That's play great. and I can tell you this is probably in in since international basketball kicked back off after the little uh, siesta they had their uh, hiatus or whatever we're going to call it um it's probably one of the toughest teams. I think people have pushed themselves so much and I have pushed myself so much because it, for the team I'm playing on this summer, it's a very talented bunch, you know, and they've definitely like, you know, it's definitely made me work, work harder. Well, I won't say work harder, but my, it's more to do with the recovery. 
and how I've minded myself to put myself in a position to be there every Saturday or every Sunday, put in the salad four hours. So, you know, I'm definitely really excited for Cyprus and you know yeah. what might happen over there. Hopefully, hopefully we get to see it over here as well. I know what Yeah, no, it should be streamed, I'd say. I hope I haven't heard anything yet, but you know, we've another what's only like after next weekend we're flying out. So two weeks. Two yeah. weeks and we're gone. Yeah. It's after creeping up so quickly. Well, mind yourself for the next two weeks because yeah, exactly. we need to see you back on the court. So final question, who would you like to see on the podcast? And you have to try and help me get whoever this guest is. Oh, who would I like to see on the podcast? I'm trying to think who. Hmm. Who, who have you interviewed? I, I can't remember them all. It was Gillian Hayes, Hannah Thornton, Katrina White, Elaine Scally. Yeah. Recording Suzanne McGuire. Actually, Gillian Hayes, her words of wisdom, you know, play for as long as you can. Yeah. You can't control that from the sideline. And I was like, Ooh, you're really so right. And she says to me all the time, she's like, what did I tell you? I'm like, I'm right. And fortunate enough to have her as an assistant coach right now. Unbelievable. You know? So yeah. Um, on the podcast, I think you should get Michelle Fatty on. I'm going to try. I really am. You know? She's you know, <laughs> legendary. So humble, great. You know, Neve probably would love it too, but you couldn't listen to her. You'd have enough in one of the wire. But Michelle Fai is the one you got to go after. I'll go after Michelle and Neve. I'm going to go after the two of them and get them on because I want to I want to do with like a whole coaches section as well. Get some coaches. Oh, on. yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Rather than just all players, let's get some coaches on in here. A coach's yeah. opinion. Well, I, yeah. could you, I could tell you if you not to ask. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have, I have a list like that as well. Don't worry. Does it go to you? I'll be going, nah, no. Nah. Oh, remember me? No, I'll just leave it at that. Look, Grania, thanks a million. Look after yourself the next two weeks, and I can't wait to see this uh, small countries. Thanks, I appreciate it. Thanks so much Thank for having me on. Cheers. So there you have it. There's Grania's episode. Um, great episode. Some great advice for younger kids um, and all their players alike. Um, head over to our Instagram page to get voting. It's Team Dwyer versus Team Scully. Can we finally get a, a closer rematch or a closer match? Um, two legendary teams at this stage, the old and the young. Um, look, everybody who has Twitter or, or social media, let's get on to RTE and let's get the small countries championships televised. Let's find out whether we can go actually see our team. They will literally show every other sport bar basketball like rowing great and Lee's Murphy's fantastic don't get me wrong and and the brothers from Cork but like we are doing so well at basketball our, our our basketball league is probably in the best condition it's been in years so let's get on to RTE and 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 tweet them and get on to RTE sport and we have an advocate in there in Jackie Hurley so let's let's bombard them let's get basketball back on TV and until Thursday, this is Jago saying, I'll see you on the court soon.